Alright guys, another quick aquaponics update. It's uh, about 43 degrees outside right now and uh, about 52 here in the greenhouse. It's uh, sun's not really up yet, just starting to hit it. And uh, it's a nice place to be. Uh, this bed was one that we relocated. I've shown you, uh, I think since then, that we've done that. We uh, capped it with this expanded shale. Uh, this is really great stuff, but it's too fine to build your entire bed with. But it makes a great about two inch cap. And this one, much like the indoor uh, bed, was grocery store planted. Like that's bib lettuce that, or you know, that comes with butter lettuce that comes in a living container. We just pulled all of the outside leaves off. I think we did uh, hamburgers. And we use leaves uh, for our buns because those butter lettuce leaves make good. They make good tacos too. Uh, it's a romaine heart back there. A couple celery hearts that we popped in. They're starting to grow. This was all planted uh, about seven days ago. And, uh, you know, these green onions were ones that we, we never cut. And then we've got some that we did cut. So, like I've always said, your green onions will store a hell of a lot better in a wicking bed or, I mean, an oven and flow bed than they will in your refrigerator. So, when we want them, we just come out here and cut them off leave the tip in and they just start growing back the big thing though is look at this these are these garlic cloves i talked about so this is almost big enough right here i'll go ahead and pull this one out well i say i'll pull it out about big enough to use like a chive this has been in that bed for seven days look at the roots on it um i've planted garlic cloves in dirt before that are well taken care of and keep in mind it's not exactly warm in here that much this time of year Look at the growth, seven days, for the roots in seven days. This is just a clove taken out of a head of garlic. And the way we use these is we let them get maybe a couple inches longer, and they're nice and small like this. You cut this up, use this like a chive. The smell of this, the aroma, the flavor is just huge. Anyway, so that bed, again, is mostly grocery store planting. You got the hearts of some hot soy back there. You see the little green lettuce right in there? That's actually pulled out of one of the wicking beds on the indoor system. Here's another one. I've started to pull those out. I was growing them like as a mescaline mix. There's another one back in there. And uh, so I'm, I'm using that system to provide plants for this system. Now I planted this. I <clears throat> better fix that so I don't break my neck when I step up here. All right. So this one I planted yesterday. I went by Lowe's because I had to for another reason. And holy crap, they had plants already. They have these bonnie plants that I think are extremely overpriced, except when you're doing aquaponics, you know, you get more bang for your buck. For instance, I bought one red romaine lettuce, or two, two red romaine lettuce plants. Let's see how many plants we have in our system. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think that's it for the red romaine. Uh, why? Because when they do those plants, they just put a pinch of seeds in them to make it faster. And usually what you do when you bring them home, you, you, you just trim off all the excess. It's pretty hard to pull the roots apart and put them into a conventional garden and not have most of them die on you. Well, if you look, this stuff's been in here since yesterday, and it all looks very, very healthy. It's some about these wicking beds. Same thing with parsley. I'll be pulling these out and transplanting them to gardens later. I bought one parsley. Uh, let's see, one, that's cilantro, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then I put one over there, so nine parsleys out of one package, uh, maybe that's ten in the back there, so ten out of one. What you do is you get, you take, you take it out of the pot or container that it comes in, and you get a bucket of water and you gently get all of the dirt off the roots, which you want to do for planting into this type of a bed anyway. And then just very delicately you pluck it apart and it would cause a lot, and we use, I usually trim the roots to only about that long. And it, it, that would cause a lot of transplant shock in most environments, but in a system like this, with this ebb and flow, it's just like magic getting those roots going again. And uh, as you can see, everything's taken off spinach. I bought one spinach plant. Uh, I got one two, three, four, five out of one plant. So what I do, most people look for like, you know, one so they don't have to deal with this. When I go and if I buy plants from a store, I look for as many as possible. Because I know even if I don't want them to stay long term in here, 
I can separate those. I can put them in here, kind of nurse them back to help get them big and strong and get a big root system on. Since they're in this, we can we can pull them right out of this so easily and then transplant them into, you know, a garden. And honestly, so you don't get shocked, the best thing to do is put them in a pot, harden them off for a couple days, and then put them out in your garden. It, it really is that simple. Uh, now here's a little hack I came up with. When we started using this expanded shale, um, we noticed that over time you would build like a little bass pond here. So even though the whole thing would work flawlessly, right where the water went in, you would end up with this little puddle. And you'd have to clean it out every so often. So what I did here is I just took a piece of two inch pipe and when we filled this bed, I put this pipe all the way down to the bottom. It's got a bunch of holes drilled in it, uh, you know, about um, probably five eighth inch holes. I threw it on my drill press and drilled it so it looked pretty even though you'll never see it again. And that way this water, as it fills, it's filling from the bottom up the way it's supposed to. It's not having to trickle down. It's actually getting to the bottom, spreading out and filling up. And uh, it's prevented any type of moisture on the surface at all. Even though the water, you can see that the water is, you know, coming up to just below this expanded shell. And this stuff wicks really nicely. So basically I set the water level to come just over top of the lava rock and then put two inches of that down. And it's worked out really well. I wish I had thought of that here before I filled it. So with this one, I tried to shove a piece of pipe down in there and it just didn't work. So what I did is I just by hand dug down as deep as I could, preventing it from caving back in. And then I just filled that hole with nothing but large, airy lava rock, creating kind of like a lava rock well to allow trigger. And that stopped any, uh, any accumulation of uh, water up on the surface there. So that's a good little hack. And from now on, I'm gonna stick to doing this with all of my ebb and flow beds. Uh, I think it solves so many issues with beds getting kind of clogged up and things like that. Anyway, um, really happy with the way we've reconfigured everything in here. You know, it was the original plan was to try to do four ebb and flow beds, and it just makes, you know, 30-40% of the bed completely inaccessible, almost half. So you end up with, you know, row space you can manage being about the same doing two. It's so much easier to manage now, and as you can see, we can grow a lot in a single ebb and flow bed. And we'll continue on with our conversion process in the aviary where all this water runs out to. And, uh, oh yeah, one other thing, my buddy David came over and helped me with this problem we were having here. If you guys remember, I had water bridges put in uh, to compensate for that. We had a one-way valve we put in this we thought was a good idea. Uh, first winter it stuck and never worked again. So this was a really tight uh, return line here. Uh, but David put a rubber boot on it. That made uh, plumbing it in easy. And that means that the solid separator in there is now 100% doing its job because all of the return comes into the bottom from both sides. Anyway, that's what we're up to this week. We'll catch up with you later.